SpaceX's Crew Dragon truly lives up to the name. The game changer in the Russian-American space race wowed the world as it has flown more astronauts than any spacecraft since its debut. Notably, the vast majority of astronauts who have flown aboard SpaceX's spacecraft give it more praise than any other vehicle. And why is this? Why do astronauts prefer Crew Dragon to Soyuz and Starliner? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The first time Musk unveiled the seven-seat Crew Dragon concept was at an event at SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California in May of 2014. Unlike the three-part modules of the Soyuz capsule, Crew Dragon just includes two sections, the Crew Module and the Trunk. The Crew Module is designed like the Apollo Command modules that carried astronauts to the moon. The Trunk has solar panels, heat removal radiators, space for cargo, and fins to provide stability during emergency aborts. Together, the capsule and trunk stand around 8.1 meters tall, with a diameter of 4 meters, which is noticeably bigger than a Soyuz system. And to the delight of the astronauts, that means more space. A Soyuz just has room for three people to ride. Meanwhile, a Crew Dragon includes seating for up to seven astronauts, although NASA won't be using more than four at a time for the commercial crew program. However, due to concerns about G-forces upon splashdown, SpaceX was required to change the angle of the seats, meaning that SpaceX could no longer fit seven seats, causing them to reduce the number to just four. Regardless, it still has more capacity than the Soyuz. It's much too small and tight, complains Dutch European Space Agency astronaut Andre Kuipers of the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. Meanwhile, Boeing's Starliner, although has many aspects comparable to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, lacks the most important thing. Reliability. While Starliner is a completely new spacecraft, Crew Dragon, as of 2022, is the only U.S. human-rated orbital transport spacecraft, the only reusable orbital crewed spacecraft, and the only reusable orbital cargo spacecraft currently in operation. This alone is enough for astronauts to prioritize SpaceX's spacecraft. What's more, as SpaceX engineer John Federspiel said, the company had wanted to make Crew Dragon feel like a 21st century spaceship. Probably one of the biggest features of Dragon are the touch screens on the inside. We designed them not just to be very functional, but with a user experience in mind, he explained. NASA's old Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules were very much designed with an airplane cockpit in mind. Their sheet metal instrument panels were studded with hundreds of switches, dials, lights, and analog gauges. Their simple onboard computers were controlled by a mechanical keyboard. The commander flew those ships the same way you'd fly a plane, with a control stick determining velocity, attitude, altitude, and direction. The Dragon's designers swept all of that away, replacing everything, including the control stick, or yoke, with three large touch screens, facing four side-by-side -side seats. Each screen is capable of calling up as many as 10 sets of displays, allowing the crew to focus on a particular set of systems, such as guidance, environmental, electrical, and more. As Doug Hurley, the commander of the first crewed SpaceX mission, which launched in May of 2020, said, you have an overall systems page on the screen, and then you can drill down into individual pages as well. There's a total of 25 to 30 individual pages, and SpaceX may have added some more since my flight. With any aircraft or spacecraft, you always iterate because it makes sense, and it's easy and will help the crew. In fact, the ideal spacecraft would help the astronauts so much that they have virtually nothing to do, with the ship operating entirely autonomously. And if the automation doesn't take care of a problem, then the ground is your next layer of defense, says Hurley referencing SpaceX ground controllers who can problem-solve and issue commands to the spacecraft from the comfort of mission control. The astronauts would only ever take over if the Dragon fails to look after itself and the ground staffers can't solve the problem. Which takes us to the most critical aspect of commanding the spacecraft, flying it. The Dragon features a full-time autopilot program requiring no astronaut intervention. It lifts off from Florida's Kennedy Space Center on a version of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket that's been adapted for astronauts. 
In the event of an emergency on the pad or during the climb to orbit, the launch escape system will fire to propel the capsule and its crew away from the rocket. Parachutes are then deployed to bring the astronauts down safely. Hurley adds that the capsule design is safer than a winged vehicle under most circumstances. During missions to the ISS, the SpaceX vehicle docks with the orbiting outpost autonomously, that is, without having to be guided in by a human. Jessica Jensen, director of Starship Mission Hardware and Operation at SpaceX says, We have GPS sensors on Dragon, but also cameras and imaging sensors such as LiDAR, or laser ranging on the nose cone as it approaches the space station. All these sensors are feeding data back to our flight computer to say, hey, how far away am I from the space station? What's my relative velocity to the space station? The flight computer then uses algorithms that determine, based on this information, how to fire the thrusters to most effectively get to the docking target. When astronauts are ready to return home from the space station, Crew Dragon first undocks and then performs a de-orbit burn with its thrusters. The vehicle's heat shield located at its base must survive temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun as the craft screams through the atmosphere at up to 25 times the speed of sound. The material used in the heat shield is ablative. It slowly burns away at high temperatures to carry away much of the extreme heat. After the fiery re-entry phase, the spacecraft needs to deploy four parachutes to slow its descent. Finally, the Crew Dragon splashes down in the Atlantic Ocean, 450 kilometers off the coast of Florida, where recovery ships will take the astronauts to safety and retrieve the capsule. Shane Kimbrough, commander of the Crew 2 mission, described the pure acceleration of the SpaceX Crew Dragon launch to the space station in an interview with CBS News. Shortly after that, we started accelerating, um, heading uphill. So we were sitting on the launch pad, obviously, and when the engines lit, uh, we all started laughing um, because it just felt so awesome and powerful. Uh, but it was a great ride, very smooth. I don't remember any surprises, except we were just all very happy. And if you couldn't tell from my call downs during the uh, ascent, uh, we were all pretty excited to be on orbit again and, and feel that incredible acceleration. Kiel Lindgren, the NASA commander of the spacecraft, also has the same opinion. This is what he had to say after landing. And uh, SpaceX uh, from Freedom, thank you for an incredible ride up to orbit and an incredible ride home. Flying a spaceship has never been so easy. You just need to climb in, strap in, and close the hatch. The rest will work itself out as you fly to space. The Crew Dragon takes care of everything. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. In any case, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.